can amateur boxers use the long guard system? It's a good question with a complicated answer. In short, yes, but also no. And it depends. Allow me to explain. Today we're going to discuss which of the long guard tools presented in these two videos can be used in the IBA amateur rules, and which ones could cost you a point, or even cost you the fight. We are also going to look at some key differences in the way rules are written and enforced, and we'll answer another important question along the way. That is, in light of the IBA's restrictions, is it worth it for amateur boxers to spend time developing the long guard, especially when there are so many other important skills to sharpen? The answer, by the way, is yes, but the reason might surprise you. So let's get down to business. What parts of the long guard systems presented in these two videos can you actually use in amateur boxing? Admittedly, if you go by the book, it looks pretty bleak. In fact, a lot of my favorite long guard techniques could be interpreted as fouls. For example, per Rule 21, the IBA prohibits hitting with an open glove, the inside of the glove, wrist, or side of the hand. In theory, this could take away some of the more forceful and strike-like techniques we use to off-balance, hand trap, and control. This rule prohibits pushing the opponent's face with the arm or elbow. Personally, I'm not pushing a lot of people's faces with my elbow, but this does seem to limit our options for head control, off-balances, shoving the eyes off target, posture breaking, and hard framing. It specifically problematizes a lot of L-guard techniques, which use a lot of forearm pressure and contact up close, to trap, off-balance, and create space. Now, depending on your interpretation of this rule, prohibiting holding or holding and hitting, you might have to give up some hand trapping techniques, along with framing, where we hold the opponent's glove in place with one hand and hit them with the other. Finally, the real kicker, this rule prohibits keeping the advanced hand straight in order to obstruct the opponent's vision. This looks like a big problem. Depending on your interpretation, or, well, the refs, it could mean no blinders, no defensive traffic, maybe no basic long guard position at all. Don't worry, the IBA rules are not as restrictive as they seem, and you can tell as much without knowing the first thing about the long guard system. Just look how much inside fighting and clinch work goes on in the amateurs. You probably wouldn't expect to see this after reading that extensive list of fouls. No holding, no pushing, no holding and hitting, no locking the head, no locking the arm, etc. But there it is. Dirty boxing, posture breaks, clinch fighting, at one of the highest levels, in full view of the ref, with no fouls called. Now, if you know your opponent is going to be dirty boxing and fighting you in the clinch and getting away with it to boot, you should be doing it too. It's the same thing with the long guard. Sure, you may have to stop using some of the more physical controls, the nasty posture breaks and grappling focus techniques, although even that depends on the ref's interpretation of the rather ambiguous IBA rules. But those big brother bully techniques only make up a small part of the long guard system. The majority of long guard techniques are still valid, and amateur boxers are using them to win fights at the highest levels of the sport. They do it in full view of the ref, consistently, without warnings, penalties, or disqualifications. So yes, you can use the long guard in amateur boxing, or most of it anyway. Exactly how much of it you can use really depends on the ref's interpretation of the rules, and you will need to relax on some of the more blatant grappling and head cranking stuff, but that still leaves 95% of the long guard system on the table. So that brings us to the important question I alluded to in the intro. With so much left open to interpretation, should you be spending your valuable training time developing the long guard? If you're interested in mixed martial arts or other striking sports with grappling elements down the line, 100% yes, as the long guard complements these very well. And if you only plan to compete in amateur boxing, the answer is yes again. Rules be damned, if you know there are amateurs out there doing this, using controversial long guard fighting techniques to score, stay safe, and control the fight, would you leave an intentional gap or blind spot in your training? Spending no time developing your long guard just because one interpretation of the rules says you cannot do it, or parts of it? Even if you wouldn't call yourself a long guard fighter and don't plan to be fighting with the hands out, you will find yourself in LG1 all the time. 
while playing with the jab and lead hand, pawing against southpaws, and after missing punches. With that being the case, it's not a bad idea to study this position and develop your defensive options from there. The long guard system also centralizes or consolidates a number of great techniques that apply elsewhere in boxing. Some of these techniques, like prying and hand trapping and creating defensive traffic, tend to get overlooked or slip through the cracks in more traditional textbook approaches to training. By giving the long guard system some dedicated training time, you make sure you get your reps. You fill in these gaps and flesh out your skill set, even if you aren't planning on fighting with the hands out very often. Finally, if you intend to fight pro or in MMA or other striking sports, there's a good chance all of the long guard techniques will come online and you will have put the time in during your amateur years developing these tools where others have not. So yeah, work on your fucking long guard. I have some closing thoughts. Here goes. In my opinion, IBA rules are not meant to ban the use of long guard techniques. On the contrary, they exist to promote the proper application of long guard techniques, which is to use them in spots opportunistically, seamlessly integrated into your flow of feints, head movements, punches, guard changes, and positions. This is a key long guard principle that the long guard is not a standalone system or static position you hold and work out of for minutes at a time. The long guard is used in short spurts. You catch glimpses of it off punches or flowing out of a stream of feints. You sneak your traps, blinds, and traffic into the mix for quick moments of control and quick disruptions. You camouflage your long guard techniques, both from the ref and from your opponent at all times. I say again, amateur rules do not prohibit the use of long guard techniques. They just discourage bad long guard techniques. This is an important distinction because we often criticize amateur rules as being too limiting, too far removed from the realities of more open systems. In this case, this is somewhat true. I mean, there are limitations on viable long guard techniques, the bullying stuff I mentioned before, but most interpretations of IBA rules keep 95% of the long guard system in play. As long as the fighter applies them properly in small bursts that are seamlessly integrated with and camouflaged by their other movements. This is how the long guard is intended to be used. And I think the IBA rules actually do a great job of staying true to that.